Car of Passion started pretty early. I was pretty obsessed with Herbie the Love Bug. That my parents had a Jeep my dad drove every day. One night, I snuck down into the garage and put racing stripes on my dad's truck and then also put tape over the headlights because that's what they had in race cars. And I drew a number on the door all while they were sleeping upstairs with paint. So my dad woke up and he went to go to work and he had a meeting to get to. On the way into the city, he got pulled over because his headlights were taped. So he tried to tell the police officer that my six-year-old son did this and he didn't believe him. Gave him a ticket for having obstruction on his headlights. I got home and I don't ever remember being reprimanded for it. I think I thought that my dad's truck was alive and it was Herbie the Love Bug in a 4x4. It's just kind of developed from there. My name's Eric Rothenhaus. I'm a product designer and I drive a 550 Spider. I don't come from a family that likes cars. In fact, most of my family has nothing to do with them, can care less. So somewhere along the lines, I got bitten by the bug. I think I was assessed with the idea that cars could be alive and they could be something more than just engineering products and you kind of become sentimental about them. I think I can trace it back to the industrial designer that my dad used to hire and the design that I love to do now and the cars and having kind of beautiful sculptures because that's what he had. It was almost in my blood even when I had no money and I was scraping together money just for gas. I was still customizing and building and playing. For me, it's the thrill of the driving. I like having different experiences, but those experiences need to be visceral. The cars that I usually try to get are ones that are maybe basket cases, ones that have been forgotten. Cars that people put away wet or driven hard. So as a product designer, you always want to make things better for other people. The idea is, is that you improve on things. And I think with the cars, they're in shambles when I get them. And the fact that I can instant gratification, put my creativity to them, and it kind of is a, an amazing experience. Probably started with an 87 Jeep Wrangler and wanted to lift it up, put bigger tires on it, lights, do all the things you do when you're 19 years old. And then that moved into someone really liking it and wanting to buy it. And then I ended up trading it for a Corvette. And that Corvette needed a ton of work. And from the Corvette, it went to a Fiat. It just kind of evolved from there. I kept putting my stamp on them and detailing them and putting my vision into them. It was therapeutic for me. So the car is um, a vintage motor cars car, built in 2003. The chassis in the car is a two and a half inch tube chassis, almost like a space frame. This car handles a lot better than the original. It has full out coil over suspension and it's got a, a big motor in the back, roughly about 200 horsepower. Compared to the stock ones at 110, it's a huge difference. This thing hustles down the road really quick. The interior, again, is all sheathed in aluminum and the seats have all been redone. The suspension has all been redone in the front. I kind of handled all that. Fully set up with Coney shocks in the front. Got a great freeway flyer gear on it, so it actually has no problem in excess speeds of 80 miles an hour if it has to. That feeling, that acceleration, and the throwing at a, into a turn and out of a turn is pretty stunning. It'll hustle, and I think a lot of that has to do with the build quality of the car. The original builder built such a prime example of a really nicely built car that it held up through all that abuse, so returning it back to where it was supposed to be has been pretty easy in some aspects. This car is as visceral, I think, as it gets. It is as mechanical as it can get. The shifter in the car is one solid rod of metal connecting to a transmission. You feel the engineering, you feel like a piece of the machine. You can hear everything right behind your head and you can feel and hear the air getting sucked into the motor. You feel like you're part of this machine. Everything is completely raw. You're exposed to everything. You are sitting in a car that is much smaller than just about anything on the road and a lot lower. It's almost like being on a motorcycle. And you start to think about the people who drove these things in races and what kind of people they were and being this exposed and you gotta have respect for it. 
there's these feelings that you get while you're driving it. That is the only way I can really ever fully experience it and tell people what it's like is for them to drive it. And I said, handles, you get out, you feel good, you feel like a race car driver. And they're like, yep. And now you know why Porsche is Porsche. There's so many senses in your hand and on the steering wheel and in the shifter and on the floor and in the butt, the seat of your pants, that you know when you're not doing something that you should be doing. This car is that nimble and that light that even a pebble, I feel it. This car is kind of all about driving in a groove, in a pattern, in a feeling. You drive this car with emotion. It's almost sentimental in some aspects. You appreciate what it is, and it kind of appreciates how you drive. And that's uh, not very many automobiles that can do that. Not that exciting. Um, so it kind of feeds my designer eye. It's just a perfect shape, it's a perfect body. It looks like it's going 100 miles an hour when it's just sitting still. But the thing that's really interesting is, is it makes it a very unique car by itself. Probably one of the first things people notice. And then the second thing they notice is the color. I went with a competition blue, and it's bold, it's poppy. It's huge white steering wheel and it flexes like crazy. It takes that much more effort and control with that flexing steering wheel and it's gigantic getting it around turns. It's just much more interesting of a drive. You're just taken back into this time that was vintage race cars. Like you get out and you're tired, but it's a great tired. So this car gets so much attention. It's a rock star by itself. We brought this to Monterey this past year and I got waved into every event and parked up front. I like people to come and ask questions because most people have no idea what this car is. They've never seen one in person. They only made 90 of them. So they're super rare. It's a recreation of a car. Being creative, sometimes you wake up in the morning and, and you don't have what you need. You're not getting on paper the sketch that you want. Sometimes you need a little mental break and I'll go out in it. We'll take a nice ride. I'm a little careful on the highways just because people like to look at it, but they sit in spots sometimes that you can't see them or you didn't see them or, and stuff. So you're a little bit like a motorcycle. You're a little bit aware of your surroundings. It's a small car, but it's also like being 14 years old and you built yourself a go-kart. And then you go to DMV and they say to you at 14, do you want to put license plates on that and drive it every day? That's what it feels like.